I get shit done. I have fun. It's my time and I'm the one. I'm breaking through. So, are you providing great customer service? What's the impact if you are? What's the impact if you aren't? Stick with me. We're going to discover and talk about that today. But here's a word from me, my sponsor. Welcome back. So if you've ever had a question for a business coach, um, now's an opportunity. You could uh, ask us a question around time, could be around team, money, or possible future uh, exit, exit strategies, or what's next for your business. Or maybe it's something around sales or personal development for your team or leadership. Uh, shoot us a shoot us an email. Let me just put that up so you can do that. Um, it makes it a lot easier. So you can shoot me an email here. And if I don't have the answer um, to your question, I'm part of a group of coaches around the globe. And we could direct it to somebody who has more expertise in the area than perhaps I do. So uh, shoot me a note. And if we can help you, great. And there's no credit card that's required either. So Getting back to, uh, are you providing great customer service if you're in the business of owning a business or if you're an entrepreneur? Or what I'm going to talk about today actually fans out even a little bit further than that when we talk about the integrating principle. And we believe the integrating principle is all about service. So this principle integrates all human life and um, it's we, we think it's really important. We believe that there's a single principle that integrates all of our actions and behaviors at work and in relationships outside of work. And that is service. Um, Zig Ziglar, I believe, said, if you help enough people get what they want, they'll fill your purse with um, dollars and cents. In other words, uh, you'll be compensated for the service that you provide to others. <clears throat> So your job and your work and in your family life is actually to integrate yourself into the lives and activities of the people that you hang out with, who are either your customers or your family or your social circle. The greatest source of lasting satisfaction, uh, you know, that deep down happiness in life, I would suggest comes from knowing that you are making a real positive difference in the lives of other people. And I say that because recently I had received an unsolicited email response. Uh, and in that email, the content suggested that uh, in a very short period of time of working through some of the concepts and ideas that they've been introduced to by myself and the concepts we have through the coaching franchise content of Brian Tracy's and my own personal experiences making an impact, helping somebody out in, um, in their role as, a, as a, a team member with the company, but also with their personal life. And uh, they were grateful to have been introduced to some of the concepts we've been talking about. So let's carry on. Um, it feels good to help other people, let me tell you. So if you're having a bad day, um, go figure out who you can serve, who you can help. Um, I'm going to share a story here, time permitting, about um, a couple of ways that that shows up for us. So uh, in today's Business Renovator, we're going to be focusing in on the concept of service and how it's the integrating ideas to the people that we hang out with. 
So if you think about what is your uh, what is your job title, what is your official position, and w- what should it be if you're not sure? Well, I believe, and we believe at the focal point world, that uh, our role in life is to be a problem so- solver and a solution provider. And our chief aim and responsibility is to provide customer satisfaction. Now, customer when we get into the definition of it, you might be surprised or you might totally agree. So everything in in our lives um, will be determined determined by how well we satisfy and serve customers. So how do you define a customer? Well, let me share what we believe to be the definition of a customer. And there's, there's three areas of it, actually. One is that is anybody who's dependent on you Uh, for something that they require for their personal or work life. That's one. Two is there um, someone that we're dependent on for success and happiness at work and in our personal life. And the third part is almost everybody around us is a customer in some way because um, we need them, you need them, or they need you or they need me or maybe both. And in any business there are four levels of customer satisfaction. The first level is that they're satisfied, they're happy with what you did. Uh, in other words, they're not unhappy, you've solved the problem, but they're not a raving fan and they're not telling a lot of people about the experience they've had with you. Uh, the good thing is they're not telling you, telling about a negative experience because you satisfied them, but it, they're, they're, gonna, they're not your raving fans. The next level is uh, somebody that you've, delivered your product or services in a way that exceeded what they expected. So that's level two. And then when you start to exceed expectations, you're going to be growing, moving into the growth and prosperity side of your life, uh, both personal and business. And here's a curious question. Who sets, who sets the bar for customer satisfaction? Who, who makes that determination? Well, it's your competition. So they're trying to meet or exceed the levels that you are, or you should be trying to meet or exceed your competitors' levels so that the customer satisfaction aspect of it is you provide more value and satisfaction than your competitors. That's where the line is set. So it's quite possible that your competitors are actually, you know, trying to uh, satisfy their customers and maybe trying to earn the right to have have some of the people that uh, deal with you move to them. So something to keep in mind is the philosophy of can I, not can I do something, but can I constant and never ending improvement? How can you show up in that way? What can you do to improve the experience, uh, the service levels for the people that you are engaging with? Level three is uh, customer delight. A friend of mine, Brian Monahan, wrote a book called uh, Customer Delight 365. And what he's done is created a page for every day of the year. I think actually it's the title of the book is that, but he has actually 366. And he's a big fan of providing delight to his customers and took the time to create a book and have it published. It's available on Amazon. Um, you can get it there. It's not expensive and it's worth having. You can um, have a different idea and Brian's uh, take on it on a daily basis. There's some really interesting quotes in there in and around customer delight, customer service. You might want to go get it. So customer delight is level three. And this is where you do something that causes your customer to really, really light up, get excited. You're actually creating the wow factor level one. And they're now starting to be raving fans, starting to tell people about what you do. So it's helping with your word of mouth strategy to grow your business or expand your organization or bring more people into your organization, association, whatever it is you're doing. This applies to pretty much every aspect where we're working with human beings. Um, They're they're kind of at that place where they're um, actually delighted and they had no idea that uh, what you were going to deliver would be so wonderful. 
The fourth level is customer amazement. Wow, this is now we're moving up to a level four. And this is where you or your company does something that causes people to just be uh, bewildered in a great way. They are, they're amazed at how much value they got, how much care was taken and uh, how impactful of the experience was. You actually probably helped them feel wonderful. And that's wow factor two. And this is now the people that are going to be raving fans. I was just on a um, session like this week and one of the participants shared a um, experience they had. They'd gone back to uh, their home country and had been there for a couple of years and they stayed at a hotel. And the receptionist had engaged with them enough, like the front office staff engaged with them enough, shared the information with other team members in the hotel. And the end result was other people on the team knew more about this, their, uh, their guest and showed up and made it a, a memorable experience by uh, walking in them and gave, providing them with a great experience. And at the end of it, a complimentary dessert and with chocolate had said, welcome home because that's what they did. They wanted to provide a customer amazement. So that's what they did in that particular situation. So if I was able to ask anybody here and I could read what you're saying, <clears throat> I would ask you to think about how are you showing up in wowing your people, your customers, your family members? And the way to think about that, if you don't have an idea that comes top of mind, think about um, experiences you, you've had where you've been wowed by the experience of the uh, company or product that you're involved with or an association or an organization. What's your wow experience? And then borrow from that, leverage from that and add it to the way you show up. What, one of my uh, favorite ones is not earth shattering, but I used to have a, a border collie. I'm just looking here for a picture, but I don't have one handy. Um, She's no longer with me, but we had moved from one part of the city to another part. So I thought, well, I better support the merchants in and around where I'm living because that seems the right thing to do. So I, I found a place and uh, it looked okay. It was clean and they greeted me friendly. So I thought, this is probably going to be okay. But what turned out was not okay. Um, what I observed was two people holding my 33 pound um, border collie, who was a gentle soul, and I was wondering why the hell they were holding her so tight. And they said, well, we're holding her in case she bites. Well, I said, you know what? If you hold her like that, she probably will bite. I think you need to let her go and we'll get out of here. So I actually went back to the older part of where I, where I used to live, which is not convenient. And it was about a 30-minute drive one way. So uh, it wasn't the best use of time. But the experience I got at the place that I used to go was unforgettable so it was well worth the trip i just organized my life around um, making sure that i did more than just get the nails clipped. the difference between the two is like night and day black and white uh, up and down in and out it was just amazing so one of the things you might want to borrow from uh, there's a company retail store head office in seattle called nordstrom's and one of the reasons why people buy from them is because their prices are the lowest right not not at all um, they have some high-end products and they have some higher prices. But the number one reason that people buy from them is the fantastic customer service. So that takes up uh, takes it beyond maybe even amazement. So I want to challenge you, if you own and operate a business, if you're in the role of serving and selling, then what are you doing to be uh, providing an, a customer amazement experience or a fantastic customer service. A few other notes around this whole process is that every single company that you go to is a company that exceeds expectations and every so often delights and amazes you by doing something you could not have expected. That's the kind of company that you would like to grow into or be, maybe aspire to be. They should be that. If they're not that, then they're in trouble. And in the promotional piece that I put together for this today, I talked about the integrating service uh, principle with service. And when you serve customers well, they will come back again and again and again. But when you give them poor customer service, they probably won't be your customers and find some other s solution provider for them. 
um, they'll be gone like in a heartbeat, uh, faster than a New York minute, perhaps. And the key to having a successful business is re repeat business. This simply comes from giving excellent customer service or amazing customer service or super fantastic like Nordstrom's does. So here's a thought. Um, high achievers come in early and are ready to get going right away. So if you come in early to your business or if you're part of a business, uh, be ready to start when you get there, get, get going and be there to serve help and make the people that you interact with uh, life a little bit better because it got connected with you that day. Um, they have a philosophy of su success comes in cans, not can'ts. They also probably come in with a mindset of they get to versus they have to, uh, they want to versus they need to. It really makes a difference with the experience interacting with people. You just never know what people's what's going on in people's life. And people sometimes show up um, stressed out, annoyed, frustrated because they have a problem they're trying to solve. And remember what I said earlier, we're in the business of providing solutions. That's what we are. We solve problems and provide solutions. And if you adapt and adopt that, if you haven't already, um, I think you'll see a huge difference in the interaction and results that you get. You'll be more like a Nordstrom's. Uh, what else would I like to share with you today? Well, here's a story. I've got a couple of stories. Let me tell them and then we'll move on and let you get on with your day. And I thank you for being here. And if you're watching this live, thank you. And if you watch us on a replay, remember hashtag replay. And just tell us uh, where you're at and what you got out of it. What's a nugget? So here's an example of what I'm getting at. So you, we have choices to make, get to make. And we can go to any restaurant we want to go to. And there's, say, the fast food restaurant, and then there's the finer dining or somewhere in between. And, you know, for about $10, you could probably buy enough food at the fast food restaurant to satisfy your hunger. But you feel that you deserve a little bit more of an experience. So to get more of an experience, you need to invest a little bit more money. So you decide to go to a uh, more upmarket, not fast food restaurant, and instead of having a quick meal, you wanted to, um, to enjoy the moment. So you picked this particular restaurant. Um, you've not been there before, but they, the uh, recommendations are a strong indicator that that's the place you should go to. So you, you go there and you're probably going to spend, I don't know, 50 or $60 instead of $10 to have the experience and be served and uh, taken care of. So you sit down in this beautiful restaurant Decor is fabulous, great atmosphere. And the hostess greeted you. It was a wonderful experience, got you sat. And then the waiter shows up, the server. And they say, yeah, what do you want? You probably would be surprised or maybe shocked. And you might even feel like getting up and leaving, but you have a limited amount of time. So be, the restaurant's nice. The waiter's server is not all that great, but you'll take a chance. So you stay and uh, you got a menu. They were kind enough to bring you that. And you look at what the, what's for offer on the menu and you pick something, place your order. The waiter takes it and, uh, you know, 20 minutes later uh, comes back and puts it, drops it on the table and walks away. Whoa. Not a really good experience with the serving staff, right? What's important about this is no matter how good the food is, I mean, the chef and his team or her team could have done a stellar job, but the way it was served uh, had a real different kind of impact. So it's really important to know that as much as 80% of the definition of the quality of your experience at the restaurant is a big aspect of the overall experience. So always look for ways to do what you do in such a way that it makes a person feel important, appreciated, happy. There's a quote by Maya Angelou. I've got the last part of it. And the most important part of that quote to me is people will remember how you made them feel, both in a positive way or a negative way. So uh, make sure that you're making people 
feel, uh, as Nordstrom says, super fantastic, or at least have an amazing experience. Have them want to tell everybody about what their experience was with your products and or services. Don't be like that waiter I just described. Let's not show up that way. Let's show up with authenticity, be progressive, and be effective. And be prepared to serve because without the people in your business, you have no business being in business. So on that note, that's a wrap for the integrated principle, which is serving others. I see I've got a few people popped in. And there's Ron Goodwin. We talked about customer service last week. And he's a big fan of being a service to people because um, he's recognized over his years of being an entrepreneur and business owner that serving people is the key to winning more sales. And my buddy Randy, who is also in the service business as a war road warrior, he serves and supports his customers all over the U.S. He specializes in um, roofs and wall systems and post bar, post. Uh, I got it wrong, don't I? Post beam con construction, and that's his passion. And you can hang out with these guys in a variety of different places because they're interested in serving other people and making their lives a little bit better. And damn it, they do it. So I encourage you to do the same thing and uh, serve others because that's how you get everything you want. Remember I talked about Zig Ziglar? He said, if you help enough people get what they want, then you'll get everything in your life that you want. So on that, let's think about this. I'm going to put something up here that's really dear to my heart. So how can you show up in a way that makes the people you engage with feel wonderful? And the you and the wonderful is pointing at you because you are wonderful. Now go out and act like your unique, wonderful self. That's a wrap for us on the Business Renovator. Look forward to seeing you on another show later this week, perhaps. I get shit done, I have fun, it's my time and I'm the one, I'm breaking through.